Jessica and Casey here with you today. We are talking about probiotics. Uh, do you take them? What are probiotics? What you should look for? What they do for your autoimmune disease, your immune system, um, and how to pick out a quality probiotic. But if you are new to our communities, we just want to introduce ourselves first so you know uh, who we are and what we do. I am Casey Kephart. I'm the founder of The Feel Good Formula, and I am a functional medicine nutritionist. I am the founder. I just said that. Gosh. Um, I live in St. I'm Peter's excited today. I know. <laughs> um, I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I work with women with all different types of autoimmune diseases to get you back to the activities you love to squash those symptoms, live your best life. Um, and moving it to you, Jessica. Wonderful. And I'm Jessica Melnick. I am the founder of the Anti-Arthritis Method, the host of the Happy Joints Arthritis Solutions Group. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist. I help both women and men with various forms of arthritis get back to living life the way you choose to, not the way that you have to. Awesome. Um, so probiotics. I actually just talked about probiotics the other day with a um, with a girlfriend who was having um, like IBS issues and um, some constipation and. We were just talking about how probiotics can help that because often in those scenarios, whether you are constipated or have diarrhea or both um, among other wide array of symptoms that we'll talk about, a probiotic can help with that. And it often means that we have an, um, an alteration in the ratio of good bacteria to bad bacteria. So we want... Um, a ratio around an 85% of good bacteria to 15% bad bacteria. They can live in a health, they can live in an environment together. We need both of them. But when the bad bacteria overshadows the amount of good bacteria, that's where this autoimmune disease lies. That's where IBS or bowel issues or eczema, psoriasis, um, joint pain, all of these things can um, arise. So, 80% of our immune system is in our gut and digestive tract. So if we are using probiotics, we can help alter and um, balance out that immune system to get you healthier, to not have more flare-ups, but also in this cold flu uh, pandemic season that we're going through, probiotics can really help fight that that fight to make you healthy and to defend and attack these foreign things and germs that are coming into your body. Um, Jessica, what else do you have to say to that? Yeah, so just kind of a continuation of that. So um, like you were saying that 80% of our immune system is in our gut area and there is a good reason for it because it's protecting us, right? So everything from helping us fend off viruses and bacteria and toxins and other infections, it helps heal our digestive issues, like you said, in the case of your, your friend you were talking to. Um, it can also help with our mental health. So now there's all this research coming out that our gut is our second brain. We produce a lot of our feel-good um, hormones like serotonin in our gut so we need to have a healthy gut in order to feel happy so if we're someone who struggles with like depression or anxiety it could be that we are struggling with our gut health as well so really really important to keep that in mind and also um our our gut and um our probiotics help absorb nutrients so that's super important. There's a very strong prevalence of um, nutritional deficiencies. So vitamin and mineral deficiencies when it comes to having an arthritis or an autoimmune condition. So um, we're not, that means we're not digesting our food properly. So either A, we're not getting enough nutrient dense food in our diet and B, we're not digesting and absorbing those nutrients from our food. So having a good healthy uh, bacteria population in our gut is going to help us absorb and use those nutrients so very very important 
It also helps us make our skin clearer. So any of those of you who are suffering from anxiety, or sorry, anxiety, acne, myself included, acne from time to time, um, eczema, psoriasis, all these different like skin disorders that can come up that can be part of an unhealthy gut bacteria as well. And it also helps us produce vitamin B12, which is really, really important. Um, creating enzymes in our gut as well. So really, really important to have this like really good flourishing amount of healthy bacteria in our gut. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, even more things that probiotics do amongst what Jessica and I just said. Um, I know a lot of people with UTIs or just chronic or UTIs, um, autoimmune disease and chronic inflammation get reoccurring UTIs, urinary tract infections, or yeast infections, uh, bladder infections. Probiotics can really help this just because it is an off balance of that good to bad bacteria. And we need to um, flourish that, mi that microbiome that we have with good bacteria, i.e. probiotics. Um, like I said, IBS issues, um, skin, and then foodborne illnesses. So let's just say you have some food poisoning, probiotics, like a, a, um, a big influx of probiotics, right? When this is going on can really help, um, because you just ingested E. coli or salmonella and that is a bad bacteria and it's over, um, overshadowing that good bacteria. So we need to constantly replace that good bacteria if you are having a foodborne illness as well. Um, if you have a, a high sugar diet, and we'll get into this in a little bit too, that can also um, feed the bad bacteria. So if you have a high sugar diet or high processed food diet, you will also need um, a consistent dose of probiotics every day. So we can keep putting that good bacteria in because all you're doing is feeding the bad bacteria so it can grow and grow and grow. Um, so some just on that track, some probiotic killers, which just means you are feeding that bad bacteria and you're killing the good bacteria, um, would also be antibiotics. So if you were a child who had constant urine infections or often got sick or strep throat or whatever it is, and you were constantly on these antibiotics, that at a very young age killed your good bacteria. Um, and it, it probably messed up your gut a little bit, which leads you to listening to our videos because you're trying to figure out your health right now, right? So if you are on antibiotics or were on antibiotics a lot when you were younger, probiotics can really help this um, because antibiotics kill the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. Um, so again, we need, we need to replenish here. Um, but also if you are on daily antibiotics, you don't want to take your probiotic with your antibiotic because it's just going to wipe out the probiotic in general. Um, so you want to take it about four to eight hours spread apart from your antibiotic. So if you take your antibiotic in the morning, take your probiotic at night because you, there's also other forms of, um, a yeast probiotic that you can take. So the antibiotic does not wipe out that probiotic. I know we're saying a lot here, but <laughs> you can rewind this and listen to that again if it was confusing. Um, tap water, just because we're adding more uh, bad bacteria in there and we're kind of feeding that bad bacteria with the tap water because it has a lot of nasty toxins in it, which kill the good bacteria. GMO foods, again, GMO is just another toxin that we're putting into our body, which is feeding the bad bacteria. Um, and reducing that ratio of good to bad. Jessica, do you wanna take the, take the rest? Yeah, absolutely. Grains are another thing. So grains, I know that they're, we're told that whole grain foods are really good. You know, they're high in fiber, they help with our digestion, uh, not necessarily for everyone. Grains have different properties in them in terms of um, their plant properties that actually can really inflame our gut. And the more inflammation we have down there, the harder it is, I think, for our, our healthy bacteria to do what it is supposed to do. So um, 
If you can stay away from grains, you're going to be uh, much further along the way. And when we look at things too, like emotional stress, it's not necessarily a food that you're putting into your gut, but emotional stress, just like it takes a toll and it uses up a lot of our B vitamins, for example, um, we use a lot more nutrients um, when we are stressed out. So same thing there, it's going to kill off some of our good bacteria because our, I think our good bacteria, they're just like little soldiers trying to help us so much. And sometimes I can only take so much uh, chemicals. So I think that often KC2 ties into uh, GMO foods. They are highly, highly sprayed. And so when we're taking in a lot of pesticides and herbicides, fungicides, all the things that come on heavily sprayed food and um, non-organic food, we're getting a lot of those things. That's also going to kill off the good bacteria in our gut. And so do a lot of medications, unfortunately. So I know that many people who have arthritis or autoimmune conditions are taking various medications. And I think it's really important to be completely aware of all the different possible side effects and long-term effects of these medications, um, which nutrients they deplete so that you are replenishing those with supplements. And also just so you're fully aware of, you know, the risks and the pros and the cons of the medications that you're on. And, you know, maybe that would even motivate you to try other options for getting your health back on track that are more natural so that you can maybe reduce or go off of some of those medications for a long-term healthier result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple different ways to get probiotics and we've, um, at least we've been talking about the supplement kind, but there is food kinds that you can get um, your probiotics into. They're not as much as they used to be back in the day. And most of them are fortified now, but um, there are options out there. And we want to buy the highest quality options of this list that we're about to, to give you. Um, so lots of things that are fermented. Well, Let's just say all things that are fermented will have probiotics in it if you make it yourself. If you buy it off the shelf in a grocery store, more than likely it will not have probiotics in it because it's been pasteurized, which kills good bacteria because of that heating process. So um, you'll want to look at the label. It will tell you if it has live cultures in it. That's what it will say. Um, and it will mostly be in the refrigeration um, department if it does have um, live cultures in it. So things like coconut kefir, kefir in general will have, um, should have probiotics in it. Kimchi, uh, coconut yogurt, um, that's goat yogurt or sheep yogurt. Um, and then we want that to be grass fed and organic and pasture raised, you know, the top of the line quality you can get for these, which will mean the top of the line quality of probiotics that you will get and probably even more probiotics than not. Um, they are more nutritious, high quality nutrition and nu nutrient dense, basically. Um, and some other things are kombucha, which is fermented tea. You'll find that in the, the refrigeration aisle. Also, you can also make your own kefir and kimchi and kombucha as well. Um, I've never had this, Jessica, Voss or Kavas. Is that what it is? I think it's kind of like sauerkraut, except made with beets. I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's just fermented beets then, right? I think so. I think it's a Russian russian traditional food i'd have to like look it up to be 100 percent sure but i believe it's it's beets or at least traditionally beets okay but and anyone who's listening please feel free to correct me if i'm wrong and then miso i don't know much about miso but um i'm pretty sure that would have gluten in it too right um not usually miso is like a fermented i think bean or rice paste that's used okay. in japanese cooking so to make miso soup um yeah so i don't believe it has gluten in it but again you have to be really careful check your labels yeah um and so those are some foods that you can get probiotics in again high quality check the label if you're getting it in a grocery store oftentimes 
places that aren't the U.S. or Canada will have these things already having probiotics in there without pasteurization. It's easier to get in other countries. Um, but besides of that, a supplement would be your best option. And it would be your best option, too, to get the most um, like dense amount of probiotics in one small little dose too, because it can go up to 400 billion IUs when you would have to eat probably four jugs of kefir to get that with an upset stomach and some diarrhea. So, um, a pill is a more, um, I'm missing the word that I'm wanting, but a more concentrated, uh, form of probiotics, but you want to get an also a high quality probiotic that you'll be able to absorb and digest and that won't cause stomach issues. So, um, Jessica, do you want to go over what to look for in a probiotic? Yeah. So first of all, you want to make sure that you're getting a good brand. So, uh, the supplements that I know Casey and myself get, recommend for our clients are from a professional grade supplement company, so that we know that our clients are going to get a very potent product that's going to be free from fillers. You are going to spend more on these products than you would if you were going to like your local drugstore or your local Walmart or something like that. It's worth it, like I said, because it's going to be filler free. It's going to have lots of active ingredients in it as well. So you know what you're getting. Um, also, like you were, Casey was saying, another good sign of a good probiotic supplement is having a high CFU count, so a large amount of live active bacterial cultures. So 15 billion units to 100 billion units. And I think, too, if you haven't been taking probiotics, you might want to start smaller so that you don't get diarrhea. If you have diarrhea from taking a probiotic, then that's a sign that you need to like scale back on your dosage. I think most people do fairly well at 15 million because when you think about it, that's a small trillions. amount. Yeah, we yeah. have trillions of bacteria in our gut. Yeah. Um, we are, I forget what percentage, how much of us is actually bacteria. It's a lot. So 15 billion is, is a pretty safe place to start and you can add up from there um, based on what your needs are and the reason you're taking it. And also having diversity of strains of bacteria. So probiotics um, have many names. They come in many forms. They are not just uh, one type of bacteria. Um, bifidobacteria and lactobacillus bacteria are two of the most common probiotics. Uh, that we take, but there's various strains of those. So you want to start with about 10 to 30 different strains because you're going to want to have a really big diversity of these bacteria and in your gut as well. And do you want to talk about survivability, Casey? I think this is a little bit more your wheelhouse. Yeah. So we have certain pHs um in our guts and certain pHs that are in food food as well that have probiotics in it and there needs to be a certain pH and I don't remember which number on the pH scale that it is for the probiotics to survive so um I'm I'm losing my train of thought today I don't know what's going on um so we just want to make sure that the probiotics can stay alive, that they're stable, and that they're making it actually to our small intestines to be able to then flourish our small intestines. So if the probiotic breaks up into right like on our tongue or the esophagus or keep going down and it breaks up there, it doesn't really do much, right? So we want it to reach that small intestines and the colon um, to uh, diversify that microbiome that we have. Um, so that's kind of what survivability is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then- I would, I would say ahead. that most of the good quality brands would have survivability you know, they would be a good quality uh, supplement where you'd, you'd be able to be pretty confident. Like if you're going to, you know, your local health food store and talking to a representative there, at least in Canada, we have locally owned 
uh, health food stores that have, you know, holistic nutritionists helping you out, or they're owned by a naturopath, or if you're buying from a naturopath or a health practitioner like myself, you're going to get a good quality probiotic that's going to get to where it needs to go in the gut. Right. But if we're buying them at drugstores, grocery stores, um, Amazon, uh, places like these gas stations, even um, don't trust them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They should be CNG, CGMP certified, which just means they're third party tested um, by laboratories who do this for a living to make sure what the CFUs are actually correct that are, is stated on the bottle, that the strains are actually correct that is stated on the bottle. Um, you don't need to be third party tested to put a supplement on the shelf and you want to make sure that you're buying supplements that are so you can trust them, you can trust the survivability, you can trust the quality, you can trust that you're getting 15 billion probiotics in you and not actually five, but paying for 15. This is a thing just because supplements aren't FDA regulated. So they don't need to go through this process that the FDA does. That doesn't mean that these aren't safe because they're not FDA regulated by any means. Um, it's just the system of the government that we have right now, unfortunately. Um, but moral of the story, do your research, do your research on your probiotics, do your research on what can help you and what strains are specific for what's, um, what symptom we can also help you too. So, um, we're happy to do that research with you or for you. We are happy to, um, send you links to good quality probiotics or supplements. Like Jessica said, we both have, um, um, a dispensary of supplements that only healthcare practitioners have because they are high quality and we are able to educate on them um, and provide that proper guidance and support for you um, because we do have that education and that licensing or certification behind us. So um, it looks like we have a comment actually. Is there any way to get rid of the arthritic enlarged knuckles? Mine look like an old witch. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, we will comment on that after the show just because that might not be related to a probiotic um, question right now. But um, where was I going? Oh, yeah. If you need help, comment below or DM one of us. Uh, we're happy to do that with and for you and, and help guide you. Awesome. Have a wonderful week, everyone. I'll be back on Thursday. <laughs> Bye, everybody.